Hi, I'm Dave Cross. In this week's quick Photoshop tutorial, I want to show you how you can put a photo inside type. As is almost always the case in Photoshop, you could probably do this operation of putting a photo inside type in several different ways. But to me, there's really only one effective way to do that, and that's using this thing called a clipping mask. And the main reason is it keeps the type being a live effect. Most other methods involve something like turning your type into a selection or something, which means you can't edit the type. This way, the type will still be active. So let's take our type tool. And I'm just going to type something in here. It's a little big, so let's make it a little bit smaller using our scrubby sliders. that and I'm just going to make the letters a little closer together using something called tracking, option or alt and the left arrow key just pull everything a little closer together. Now it's important to note that it does not matter what color your type is. Unlike a layer mask which uses shades of gray, black, white and gray to create the mask, here it's based on a shape and transparency. So the fact that I've added type and it's on a transparent background of course by default means I'm all, almost all ready to create this clipping mask. So the last thing I need to do to make this work is I need to put the photograph actually on top of the type layer and I can't do that at the moment because it's locked. So if I simply unlock it, I can drag it up to the top and now it, temporarily you can't see the type layer but of course if you look in the layers panel you can see there's my photo on top, there's my type layer below. Now in order to create the clipping mask you can do it in a couple of different ways. You can go to the layer menu and choose create clipping mask. There's also a keyboard shortcut, Option Command G on the Mac, Alt Control G on Windows. And you'll see what that does is now the photograph only shows up inside the type. Now before I go any further, what I usually like to do just to kind of see what I'm doing a little better is add a new layer at the bottom. So if you hold down the Command or Control key and click on that new layer button, then we can fill that layer with white. I did that using the keyboard because I saw my background color was white, so I pressed Command Delete on the Mac control backspace. So now let's take a closer look at what's happening with this clipping group. There's my type layer and you can see how the layer above has this little kind of arrow almost like an indent to show you this is what's being clipped and this is what's doing the clipping. Now there are some interesting possibilities. If I take the photo layer and take my move tool I can actually move the photo around inside the type. And as I mentioned right off the top, the advantage of doing it this way is this is still an active type layer. So if I want to change to some other typeface, you could see I could, you can see I can easily do that. Not that many of these make any sense, but I, I certainly could if I wanted to. I could also change to an entirely different word. So it's more than just simply changing the typeface. It is an active type layer. It's, you can use, make any change you want. Now this is called a clipping mask. Many versions of Photoshop ago was called a clipping group, which was actually an interesting name because it made you think right away, well, why is it called a group? Could it be more than just two layers? A normal layer mask in Photoshop is one layer and a layer mask. A clipping mask is a little different because it's this shape-based way of clipping, you can actually clip multiple layers with the same clipping mask. So as an example, I'm just gonna do a simple example here. I'm gonna add a new layer on top. I'm going to take my elliptical marquee tool and let's just make a circle and let's choose some color like gold and we'll fill that. So of course at first that just ignores everything else It's a standard layer but if I want to add it into this clipping mask I can go back to the layer menu. Now it's a little bit misleading because it says create clipping mask. It really at this point I suppose should say add to clipping mask but anyway it doesn't really matter. It's the same thing you can see. Now that shape that I created is only going to be visible wherever I move it inside that clipping mask. And if you can always tell if you look in the layers panel, the layer doing the clipping, the name of that layer is underlined and the layers above have that arrow and that kind of indent. Now this will stay this way until you change your mind. So for example, if I decide I don't want this layer, I'm just going to delete it completely. And I really don't want that clipping mask at all anymore. I've changed my mind. I can go back to the layer mask and choose release clipping mask. And then I'm right back to square one with my 
original photo. Now I did want to show you one other way that you can create a clipping mask that's uh, sometimes a little bit easier if you're already working on a layers panel and that is as long as the layers are positioned the correct way with the layer to do the clipping on the bottom the layer being clipped above hold down the option or alt key and then when you position your mouse right on the line between the two layers see how it changes that little symbol when you click that creates the layer clipping mask so it's the same as either going to the layer menu or using the keyboard shortcut but this just does it through one little click using the keyboard now just to show you one last example get your mind thinking about the possibilities this doesn't have to of course be tight that's why we started off with that example but it could be any shape as long as it has transparency and you can create multiple layers and put them all inside the same clipping mask so here's an example that I created previously where I took a type layer and I actually have one, two, three, four, five separate type layers. Each one is part of the clipping mask. And then in areas where they kind of overlapped, I had to add a normal layer mask just to make sure that it only stayed within the individual letter. So as I think you can see, clipping mask offers some really interesting possibilities. In some cases, actually better than using a layer mask, especially when your type is involved so you can preserve the editable nature of the type. So that's it for this time around. Be sure to be on the lookout for my next quick Photoshop tutorial and we'll see you next time.